Uh, welcome back again. Uh, we are continuing with where we stopped uh, the flow of argument. Uh, last time, remember, I gave you the flow of argument saying if Tino is driving, then Dimitri is hungry. Dimitri is not hungry, therefore, Tino is not driving. So we have shown that that statement was true. So now, even this other interesting statement here, collection of statement, uh, it's a flow, so it's in sentence, so we'll convert it to, like we did last time, we assign a statement to letter, so let's start. If it is sunny today, then the sun shines on the screen. If the sun shines on the screen, the blinds are brought down. The blinds are not brought down so, is it sunny today? That's a question. So, can you answer the question? Let's try to answer. So, first thing first, we are given that if it is sunny today, so we can assign the statement it is sunny today to P, to be our statement P. So, then the sun shines on the screen. We can say the sun shines on the screen can be Q. If Q, the blinds are brought down, then we can name it R, the blinds are brought down. So, which means P implies Q, it represents if it is sunny today, then the sun shines on the screen. And Q implies R represents if the sun shines on the screen, the blinds are brought down. And also what R is the negation of the blinds being brought down, which is the blinds are not down. So is it sunny today? We have to conclude on P. So we look at this three given statement that uh, we relate them or where can we start? So since we know in an argument those given statements are, 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 are always true, so we have to prove the conclusion. We don't know whether it's true or false, but with but the, this we are not saying here. Yeah, we are saying these given statements are true. So we don't know the truth value of Q, the truth value of R, P yet. So but we can find it by starting. We know that the truth value of not R is true. So not R is true. It means R is false. So since we know that Q imply R is true and R is false, Q must also be false because uh, a false can imply a false, but a true cannot imply a false. So that's the thing. So since we know that Q is a false and P imply Q is true, then P is false. So this it, it is that our answer will be no on our question. So it is not sunny today because we got our P to be false. Our P which is say it is sunny today. So we got not P. So therefore, the statement is invalid. So this one is an exercise for you to do it. So can we proceed to the next example? Uh, example number three. P by conditional not Q. Q or R intersect not S. S you know not U. Not P by a conditional U. Conclusion R. So you see you are given how many statements? Four true statements. Then you have to conclude on the true value of R. So first thing first, we'll start on step two because why? This one, we don't know the true value of not P or U, either this or this because of the union. This one for it to be true, both has to be true or to be false. So we don't know the truth value, but this one will, will lead us because here we, we can know the truth value of not S because for the intersection to be true, both of them should be true. That's why I said for this Q union R intersect not S is true. So both Q union R and not S are true. But and under this, I'm not sure which one is true between Q and R because for the either, it's either both 
for one of them. So I will start with this. That will lead me, and I will come back to this. Then I can conclude on the truth you know, of art. Then that uh, then I will be done. So starting with this, which I know is true. So since not S is true, then S is false. So if S is false, and you know that this given statement S in your not you is true, it means that your not you must also be true. So if your not you is also true, what does it mean? It means that you is false. And if you is false, then this given statement of not P imply you is true, then not P also has to be false. If not P is false, then it means that our P is true. If our P is true, since it's by a conditional, now we know the truth value of Q, of not Q, I mean, which is also true. So since not Q is also true, therefore which tells us that Q is false. And if Q is false, then since we know that Q in an R is true, we have conclude by saying R is true, therefore the statement is valid. So you don't just guess this, you have to understand. We started by this one that for this statement being both true, then since we are sure of the truth value of not S, we started by not S, then we say not S we know is true, then S is false. So since we know this is a true given statement, S in your not you. Not you has to be true for this uh, S union not you to be true because it's already true, so we can't change it. Because if we say uh, not you is false, it means we're contradicting S in your not you to be true. So not you has to be true, not false. So that's why the truth value of not you is true. So if not you is true, then you is false. If you is false, it's already given that not P imply you is true, then not P also has to be false because the only way that uh, this can be true is when not P is false. So that's the case. So if not P is false, then P is true. If P is true and we are given our statement that P by conditional not Q is true. So it means also not Q is true because by conditional it must have same result both sides. A false and a false or a true and a true. So we continuously uh, proceed or consequently go forward. So we know that the truth value of not Q is true, that Q is false. If Q is false, and already we have shown above here that Q union R is a given statement which is true. So therefore, R has to be true. So if R is true, therefore the statement is valid. So uh, uh, below this are my uh, WhatsApp contact and call contact. So you can WhatsApp and call at any of them if you're interested. So I will fully have copied uh, them. So right now, uh, let's move to methods of proofs. So under methods of proofs, we're going to talk there are all four methods of proof. We have the direct proof, indirect proof. We have proof by cases, proof by mathematical induction. Hey, welcome back again. So the methods of proofs. So we have four methods of proofs as I mentioned. We have the direct proof. So let's start with the direct proof, then I can move to the indirect proof. So under the direct proof, uh, we can we're going to prove directly that P imply Q. In this case, assume P reduces Q. So for example, if M then write your M is even and N is odd. You write odd number, then 
m times n is even. If their product is even, so you have to show this. So how can you show this? I mean directly. Directly we are given that our n is even. We can write our n to be 2x. And also we are given that m is all. We can write it to be 2y plus 1. Here where we can mention that x and y are our integers. So what you have to do is to deduce is to deduce m times n. So if this is the case, it means this one deducing 2x and also 2y plus 1. So you can see this is a matter of a foil method. So let's see. Continuing this one, I have 4xy. Then what else do I have? I have plus 2x. So I can take my 2 as a common factor. What am I left inside? I'm left with 2 x y plus x so this can be something like 2z so you can see that 2xy plus x is equal to z so for z it's also a, an element of integers so we have shown the, the fact that we got 2z we have directly shown that m times n is also even. Hopefully, you understand. So, that's how easy directly. Even, for example, they say if n is a natural number, then n squared is also a natural number. You know how it works. You just deduce, you'll find a natural number. There's no way if n is a natural number, you square it, you'll find a value which is a comma, so on. So, you'll find the same natural number. So, let's proceed. Now, uh, let's go to number two. Direct is fine, it's not a problem. Indirect proof. So, under indirect proof, let's first talk about proof by counterexample. So here, we are going to give an example. So, but before I give an example, I want us to look at these two important things. The universal and existential quantifiers. So, the universal quantifier it indicate for all for everything then the existential is this backward e which is uh, for some they is they exist so now remember px is a statement so in this case x is a meaning now we are focused on the meaning of a statement which is our x so in this case for example, we can have x divided by 2 is equal to k, where k is an element of integer, a set of integers. You know integers ranges from 1, 2, 3, even 0 is part of integer, even the negatives, all of them. So, uh, I can't explain to you uh, what is an integer, you all know. So, proceeding that, uh, what does this statement mean? This statement means that Every even number is divisible by two because the only way in such a way that uh, we divide x by two, we get 
just an integer is that x is even. So uh, x is an even number. So an even number is our meaning of the statement. An even number is divisible by two. Uh, that statement is denote px. So how can we express this using the universal and existential quantifier? It's for every x px. What does it mean? For every even number is divisible by two. Then in form of existential, there exists x px, there exists an even number that is divisible by two. So if we, you understand this difference is that on universal we are considering the whole population, but on existential, we are just taking a sample. A sample is sum from the population. So hopefully I have made it clear. So continuously, the negation of quantifiers. So you have to know that uh, the negation of negation of P is P. So in this case, when we negate the universal, we get the existential. But remember, it goes along with the statement. So negating for every x px, we get the existence of x not px. So which means if we negate the existence of x not px, is the same as we are going to negate for every px not px twice, which will take us back to for every px. So it's more like by negating this for every px twice, then we take us back to for every px. So that's why this implies this. You understand? We are negating the existential of not px we get for every px. Consequently, if we negate the existence of px, we get for every px not px. So if we are going to negate for every px not px will come back to the existential of px because it's the same as the negation of the negation of existential of px. So that's how it works. So now we can do some example. Let's start with first example. For every x an element of a natural number such that x is greater than zero. Do you see? Our statement Px is that x is greater than zero. That's a meaning. x is greater than zero for every x an element of a natural number. Is this true? Yes, it is true. It is true because you know that uh, in this case, what is x? Our x is given by 1, 2, 3 until infinity. Our, our x can take any value in this. It can, and 1 is bigger than what? Than 0. So, this by counter example is that we are going to say the statement is true. The statement is true. Since all Natural numbers are bigger than zero. We just said that. So, in most cases, the converse cannot be true or the negation. So, can we negate the statement? I talked about the negation. So, what happens if we negate for every x an element of a natural number? You can tell me. We get the exist 
or we negate this for every x and element of natural number such that x is bigger than zero, what do we get? We get the existence of x and element of natural number. Can we change the set? The set such that x is less than or equals to zero. The negation of greater sign is less or equals to zero. You just have to understand. So it's the negation of everything. If we have to apply the negation first, we will first negate these changes here. We take the negation inside the step, then we'll get here. So this is the final solution. So this statement, what does it mean? It says there are they they there exist some x an element of natural number such that x is less than or equals to zero. Is this true? No, it's not true because all natural numbers are bigger than zero. Is there a natural number less than zero? No, that not, does not exist. So you understand that one. So, so can, can I erase here? Then we look at example number two. Hopefully, you understood the negation part. So, example number two. For every even number is divisible by two. Is the one that we just gave here. Every even number is divisible by two. Is the statement true? Yes. So let me show you something that you don't understand. There exists x, an element of integers, such that x is divisible by 2. Is this statement true? It's related to what I have said. I have said. So, the statement is true when x is an even number. Do you see this? When x is an even number, it's an example. It's a proof by counter example. We are giving an example that x is an even number then the statement is true. Even on the first one, we are saying, we are giving an example that all natural numbers are bigger than zero. It's an example. So, even if they say, they tell you that 3x will be, you can write 3x will be bigger than zero. It applies, it's a natural number. So, anyhow, this thing has to correlate. But if this uh, you find that, uh, for example, let's check this one. Number three. For every x an element of real numbers, there exists y an element of integer such that x y equals to zero. Look at this. For every x an element of real number. There exists y an element of integer such that x times y is zero. So in this question like this, you have to look if are they supporting each other? It must apply for every x. So we are concerned if existential qualifies to go together with universal for this particular statement. Let's check. Is there a y exist? Remember, it's at least one. It can be one or many. But if I look this myself, I can see that this statement is true. For y equals to zero. So y equals to zero is our counter example to prove that this statement is true. Can you see? This statement is true for y equals to zero. So can we negate this statement orderly? You will understand how to negate a statement. Then we see if the negation of the statement is true. Let's do it orderly. The negation of every x and element of real number 
the existence of y an element of integer such that x y equals to zero. So the second step will be we negate this first, it becomes the existential an element of your number, then we negate the, the, the negation will go slowly as I said orderly now. The existence of y an element of integers such that x y equals to zero. So proceeding we have the existence of x an element of real numbers then we have for every y an element of integers the negation of x y equals to zero finally the existence of x an element of real number for every y an element of integer such that x y not equals to zero can you see let's go on we are having this so it's the negation of that statement number three so is this true is the negation true? Let's check. There exists an x in real numbers for every y, an element of integer such that x, y equals to zero. Is this statement true? No. This statement is false. Where is it false? This statement is false when x equals to zero because they exact they exist when like it when like for when y equals to zero i mean when y equals to zero when y equals to zero the statement will be false when y equals to zero because uh, for x we cannot take zero we can take any number besides zero but we must do for every y instead of integer. And y and zero falls under integers. So it must also apply for zero. Even if we take x of two, we multiply by zero. Will we get not get zero? No. We'll get zero. So it's false. So you see, it's a counterexample proof that that statement is false. We just have to focus on these things. Can you see? So, let's proceed. You will, you will understand more. Let's go there. So, we are still under the proof by counter example. Uh, so, another one. Let's look at number four. I will give more examples if you must know. Okay. If A divides B and B divides A then A equals to B so we just give an example let's give an example e.g. let uh, A to be K and B to be equals to negative K for K an element of A Natural number. So we can see that A over B is the same as what? A over B is the same as K over which is negative 1. And also B over A is the same as negative K over K which is negative 1. 
But A is not equal to B. Therefore, the statement is false. Can you see? We can take any two numbers which can, the only way that we can divide each other is that we are having and it's the same number but from negative sign and the positive sign. Negative two and negative two. Negative one and one. I mean something negative two and two. Negative one and one. That's the case. Because K, so in this case, this one is false. It's by a counter example. Let me check if I still have a link example based on. No, it's by yeah, counter example. Let me check if I have any last example for you guys. Okay, I have the last one, luckily enough, guys. This one is interesting, guys. Hopefully, I'm enjoying the session. Eh? Uh, I'm not so perfect, so if, if I was a computer, yeah, I was going to appreciate it because eh, I wasn't gonna get tired or make any mistake. Happy scientific technology, these, com these calculators, eh, they perform miracles, guys. But as a person, as a person, I tend to make some mistakes. So, uh, so I'll give you your homework on this number five. So, uh, actually, I'm not gonna do it. Let me give you to try it. And also negate this orderly. you find the negation of it. A homework or exercise. Why am I saying homework? Because you're not even home. <laughs> so, let's say it's an exercise. I need you to do this. Go and find for me this. Then, uh, uh, I think right now I can erase here, then we proceed. So, guys, uh, I give you time to do that one. I give you time, do it, then you will confirm. Uh, uh, I'm not going to do it, ne? so please focus on it yourself. Let's proceed. Uh, let's go to uh, the, uh, the, the, the last two on the indirect proof, then we'll do counter example. Mathematical induction, uh, uh, we'll do it as a chapter, then after these proofs will be done for the mathematical logics. Uh, so uh, continuing, uh, we are going to focus now on proof by contra position. So, under this one, we are going to prove that P imply Q by proving that not Q imply not P. For example, for 7n plus 4 is even if n is even. So, 7n plus 4 is your P, which is even, then this one is your Q. So, we have to prove this. So, to show this, uh, that is true, we have to introduce the negation of what? Of the conclusion, which is Q. So, we are going to assume our N is odd. I.e., N can be given by 2K plus 1 for K, an element of vintage. Then, we have to deduce 
seven n plus four. So we can try this, guys. Let's try it. So seven n plus four is the same as seven into two k plus one plus four. So what is this? This is the same as fourteen k plus seven plus four. So what we have to show, we have to show that this is odd. Then we can conclude by contraposition if n is even, 7 plus 4 is even. So that's how it works. So here you can see that these guys, this plus this, what is it? This one is 11. So instead of writing that, I can write 11 in the form of 10 plus 1. So I can write this as 14k plus 10 plus 1. So in this case, I can take 2 as my common because I want to prove that I have 7k plus 5. So but plus one. So this will end up being my two Q plus one. Then I will say for Q equals to seven K plus one an element of integer. Thus, by contra position seven n plus four is even if n is even why I have shown that not q will imply not p because what's happening is that it's I found that 7n plus 4, if n is odd, is also odd. This part is also odd. So by contraposition, I can conclude. So let's, this is not different from contradiction. So now let's do contradiction. That's how you do it. Proof by contradiction okay if I'm proving now I'm going to prove by contradiction hopefully you can see whatever I'm writing but you have to understand these things don't rush on them and give them time you will understand them, they will enter. So, this one, we are proving P imply Q by proving the negate, by negating it. We are contradicting it. So, this, you remember, it was equivalent to P intercept, not Q. So, same thing, we assume not Q, then we prove that whatever result we are going to get of P by assuming not Q will contradict P. So, for example, we can, uh, let me check if I have the example here because I don't want to give hard example, simple example for you to understand. Oh, thank you. Let me do this simple example, then you will get my point. Okay. N squared plus one is Even if n is odd. So, do you see n squared plus 1 being even? It's your statement P 
and this one is the statement Q. So what they say, you have to what? You have to assume not Q. You have to assume any CB. I.e. N is given by 2x for x an element of integer. It's not always the case you use k, you can use any letter as long as you show that that thing is an element of integer. So now we want to prove that by contradiction, this is true. So we we do the same thing we did with contrapositive. We deduce n squared plus 1. So when we deduce n squared plus 1, we'll get it is equal to then where you see this, you put 2x all squared plus 1. And my I said it to be I have to have something. If it's odd, assume it's even. Okay, I can see it. It's going that side, it's going that side. Then, what do I have? What do I have here? What must I show, guys? I uh, show something okay okay for x squared plus y so can you see what's going on guys can you see what's going on we can write this as what we can write this uh, in this form 2 into two x squared plus 1. So we can write this as 2y plus 1. So can you see what's, what's happening? For y equals to 2x squared, an element of integer. We just show that this thing is odd. And odd is contradicting our assumption of n squared plus 1 being even. Do you understand why here I did this? I must show something like odd. So I have 4x squared plus 1. So I can be allowed to just uh, factor out 2. I just have 2x squared only here. Then I put y here. It transforms. I just show you only. This thing doesn't matter, it's still odd. So, by this, on my conclusion, therefore, by, contra, by, by contradiction, contradiction, because the conclusion statement contradicts the given statement. n squared plus 1 is even if n is odd. And that's how we get to do it. So, you have to understand uh, there is no need uh, to cram this stuff. So, all about understanding. So, we can proceed Let's proceed, look at it uh, carefully, because now I want to erase here, then uh, we proceed to uh, go forward. Mm. So, I need you to give you a question. You go and try it now. Uh, is proved by contradiction. 
proved by So, I give you a hint, you'll assume the square root of 2 is rational. Then you know rational can be written as a over b, where a are the smallest, what, what. Then you're sure that it will con contradict it being irrational. Then you conclude. So, let's go to the last proof. I'll only give a... Uh, 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 one example, then I'll give you your exercise to go and try it. So, prove by cases. So, this one is proof number three. What I done with the indirect, now I'm coming to number three. Prove by cases. So here we prove by cases the truth value of a statement. So let's start with, with this one. Uh, show that x minus y is greater or equal to zero for x and y an element for every x and y an element of real numbers so okay uh, we can proceed uh, x minus y is greater than equal to zero for every x y an element of real number so under this uh, example we can consider this side for your x less than y and this one for x bigger than y. So we have three cases. Case one, what happens if x equals to y? It means that x minus y is zero. So the absolute value of x minus y is the same as absolute value of x minus x or y minus y, which is zero. So the condition holds. What happens if x is less than y? Case number two, then x minus y is less than zero. And we know that for a negative number, absolute of a negative number is positive, always positive. For example, absolute of negative k is k for k an element of natural number. So that, that's why this is greater than zero. What happens in case number three? What if x is greater than y? So then the x minus y is greater than 0. So, x minus y is greater than equal to 0. So, regardless of what value x and y can take from the set of real numbers, regardless if the fraction is y, if, if we take its absolute value of the difference between x and y, we'll get it greater than equal to 0. You must understand greater equals to zero. So another example is this. n squared plus n is always even. We have case one where n is even, case two where n is odd. So what happens if n is even? We must use n squared plus n. So you know this, uh, uh, if you, when we say this n is odd, we say n is 2k plus one, for k an element of integers. So when we see n, we put 2k plus 1 squared plus 2k plus 1 because of n squared plus n. So you can simplify this, you'll get 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. Because of this 2k from here, that's why you have 6k. That's 4k after Manipulating this plus this, you get 6k. Then that one and this one, we get plus 2. We take 2 out, we are left with this. 2k squared, 3k plus 1. So we just uh, assign this to q, where q is 2k squared, 3k plus 1. So we add them, which is even. 
So you can see that if n is odd, it's even. What about if n is even? 2p for p an element of integers, even. So n squared plus n is going to be 2p squared plus 2p, which is equal to 4p squared plus 2p. Then we take 2 outside, then it's 2p squared plus p. So this it becomes 2r, where r is 2p squared plus p, an element of integers, then it's even. So regardless of this, this thing is what? It is even, regardless of the cases. So you can go and prove this, that n cubed plus n squared is even. So case one, you'll deduce when it's odd, it deduce when it's even. So, you just have to understand. So, uh, you have to be fine with these things. Hopefully, uh, you will be fine. Uh, so, what I need you to go and prove. Can you go to prove that n to the power 5 plus 1 is odd? If n is even, maybe you can try and go to prove it if n is odd. The thing is going to be even. So do more proofs, you'll understand. Uh, guys, uh, this brings us to the end of our session on these uh, mathematical logics. Uh, and it's time for us to move on to set theory. Um, articles are, by the way, uh, um, found here at University of Limpopo. I'm doing a final year in statistics. I've done my math final, so uh, I assist uh, with this uh, module. So you welcome or uh, the subject of math. So uh, I gave you my contacts uh, when we began this session. So. You can inbox me if interested to be in communication of me with me. So I advise you to keep on subscribing and supporting me. You're all welcome.